All right, Matt, run us through it real quick. Well, today's Friday the 25th. It's been a rainy morning. We didn't go out this morning. Came out for a mid-morning hunt to check the deer cameras. Saturday, May 13th. I'd say about 8 o'clock, maybe 8.30 now, I'm not exactly sure what time it is, but uh This right here, this is what life's all about. Walking out of the woods, early morning, raining, big old dead gobbler on your shoulder. This is why we wake up at four o'clock in the morning every day. Grind it out. All right, guys. Three bucks. One day, One day same tree. Same tree. Oh my God, I'm so Woo! Holy shit! Oh, oh, <laughs> get a shot of these. <laughs> Two farms this year. Number one is done. Did you say bye, Kevin? I did. I already did. Bye, Kevin. Bye, Kevin. Bye, Kevin. Bye, Kevin. Smoke it. Look at that. You destroyed it. The shop yeah. is closing up. Make sure he takes all his right hand. All right, guys, Deer Shop Podcast, episode 38, Wild Turkey Facts and Stories. I'm your host, Caleb Simon. Uh, this is my first podcast back since my daughter, Blair Virginia, was born uh, last week. I'm officially part of Team Girl Dad now with Nick and Alex and Ryan and a bunch of other guys on our crew. Um, we've been very busy. Uh, spring is a busy time. You guys are leaving for trout camp tomorrow night. Yep. yep. About, half, a, about half the guys are already there. Yeah, half our crew's already at trout camp. You guys are leaving tomorrow night. Uh, I'm not going this year. Um, they have do, been hammering the trout. Yeah, they've been, the weather's good up there right now, and they're killing trout. I know Pavlik and Dylan have both caught some big ones. Pavlik's got a couple big ones, mm -hmm. it seems like. And now, well, we, Ethan had to wait for work. Dad had to wait. I could have went down early, but I decided to go with them. You probably like should have went early because the weather looks like it's getting real bad. It's going to be real bad when we go tomorrow. Real bad. 40 We're mile an hour winds, snow. We're sleeping in tents because we don't have the bougie campers this year. It's yeah, the camp's mystery. a little different this year. There's one, Dylan's one cheap camper is the only camper up there, and then it's... It's already packed full of dudes. It's pretty barren. Uh, things have been changing a little bit for the trout camp just because of logistics. But every couple of years, there's a bad weather year. So you guys were due, or I should say we were all due for it. And this is a good year because half the people aren't going. So Yeah, there's a there's a big uh, gap of people. There's, there's another camp going up next weekend. But we're going to be turkey hunting, which is the point of this podcast. We're going to be talking about turkey hunting. But half the crew's going next weekend because of just schedules and stuff. Mm -hmm. but. Um, they'll have their own. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, you'll be able to see that there is a pile of sheds on the table. I'm pretty much done with shed hunting. Uh, I went yesterday and found two smaller ones. I should say two medium ones. Um, it was kind of a down year for us for shed hunting, I'd say. It's kind of a small and pile. And I think it was kind of an expected down year for us, at least on our properties, because there wasn't that many bucks around. Yeah, I mean, we year. found the buck on our property we wanted. Um, there's a couple other bucks that used our farm during the rut that we would have liked to find, but it just, you know, wasn't possible with where they ended up. Uh, there was a, one of our main farms did have a bunch of bucks using it towards the end, but we just haven't been able to find their sheds there yeah, yet. so bizarre. I've tried. I've put four or five really good walks in. I have found seven dead deer on that farm from either cars or hunters, which kind of sucks, but um, that's all part of the game. Uh, turkey season is going to be here real quick. That's the point of today's podcast. Um, I actually watched a gobbler with some hens yesterday on a farm that we can hunt. So Yeah, and we have some interesting weather this year. It was warming up and starting to green up, but now this storm came in and it's going to get cold this week. Not sure how it's going to look for opening weekend. 
But yeah, I know the youth are hunting tomorrow. Or no, wait, today's Thursday, right? Yeah. So the youth are hunting Saturday. Saturday. I'm not sure what the weather's supposed to be like. I I don't think it's going to be good. I haven't been paying attention, but I would like to get some clear skies for the Ohio opener. We don't. We haven't really made our plans yet, but I mean, regardless, we're going to be hunting somewhere around here, a couple of our farms. So and the woods are going to be pretty barren the first couple weeks of the season, kind of like normal, but yeah, it'll really green up. Yep. Um, Ethan started a new job. Yep. So we have another union fireman. I guess the actually the whole table sitting here right now today is union firemen. So yep. congratulations to Ethan. Uh, you got hired at Canton Fire. Um, starting your career. You got 25 to 32 years left. Yep, yep. Ready to go. Yeah, he's a union fireman now, but he doesn't get the perks for another couple years. Till he's yeah, you're still going to be... Summer's act, you know, spring and summer is actually our busy season. I know, uh, I know some of the born again guys are probably listening. And they're going to make their jokes about how we never work, but this time of year it's actually kind of wild. Isaac's yeah, been, been working, working hundred hours a week. Yeah, Isaac's been working like crazy. I'm off. I'm actually haven't been working, but I'm on FMLA. Raising a baby's uh, kind of busy. I don't have time yeah, for anything. I can imagine your lifestyle. Um, yeah, with a newborn, and then Ethan's on forty hours at his new job, so he's just constantly busy. So this spring we've gotten less done than we normally do, but also the weather. Is yeah, been, it's yeah. sort of wet. You get a teaser day. So mm-hmm. here, this is the way it's been in Northeast Ohio. We're getting a teaser day where it's seventy-five and sunny, and you get just, one of those days once a week. Yeah, and everyone's excited, and you know we actually just spend the day not doing work because we're just excited to have such a nice day, and then the next three days are just pure rain and wind mm-hmm. and just. To, disgusting yeah, and these days Misery. are been, they've been teasing us since february and then we have snow in the forecast for tomorrow yeah. so <clears throat> it's crazy i don't know what we're yeah um we were gonna shoot our turkey guns today before this podcast to use in the intro and make sure everything's going good but like we just talked about it's pouring rain out there and it has been for 24 hours so we haven't shot the turkey guns yet so we'll have to find a day next week yeah, we'll get them next that. week yeah we'll have to get them next week um we'll talk about our gun setups a little bit here um later in the episode um, our plans for this spring were already talked about on episode 32, so I'll link that in the YouTube description. Um, our Turkey Camp Chronicles schedule, we already kind of discussed all that. Today's kind of a Turkey Facts episode, and then we're going to tell some old stories. Um, we did a Deer Facts episode all the way back on episode 9 last fall, and it went over pretty good. It was a lot of fun, but, um... I did some research today before showing up here, and, you know, there's not as much published about wild turkeys as there is with the white-tailed deer. So it was very easy to find a bunch of information mm-hmm. on white-tailed deer. But the turkeys, there's a lot of studies that are going on right now in a lot of different states. There's been some money raised and stuff. Um, but there just wasn't as much information out there on, you know, unique and interesting facts. So that we're not going to concentrate too much on that part. As I'd imagine it's kind of hard to study these turkeys because the gobblers only live a couple years. So I yeah. don't know, you're supposed to capture them and then track them, and they move so much, and they're They've so been... vocal, and... You know, if you watch uh, THP or any of those shows, there's been a lot of talk about how they started putting those recorders in the woods to count gobbles, and they've, you know, been trying to... Um, See where the turkeys are roosting and stuff like you that. You know, track them. Uh, we're, we'll touch briefly later about the whole um, the Colonel and the Fox uh, documentary that just came out with Mossy Oak. If you haven't seen that on the Mossy Oak YouTube channel, go check it out. It's all about the story of how um, there used to be turkeys in major decline, and they took them from good areas and relocated them and did this, you know, a couple guys that are stewards of the turkey hunting woods and they repopulated a lot of areas in america and made turkey hunting what it is today so it's pretty cool because i guess turkeys weren't a thing around here you know, our no, 20 30 up. years ago yeah people didn't start hunting turkeys around here until i'd say late 90s mm-hmm. so late 90s early 2000s is when turkey hunting really boomed here there was, my dad dad said he never even saw a turkey till the mid 90s so growing up his on his the farm life. here his whole life never saw a turkey until later on Every. and then and then for a period of time this area was amazing for turkey hunting and then it kind of declined a that little was bit. Right when we started hunting, yeah, is when the turkey population seemed to be at the highest. We would call in six birds, and you could kill multiple birds in a morning. Yeah, we'll definitely talk about some of that in our stories. I mean, we've, yeah, there would just be birds, there. and you'd call in birds, and there'd be other birds gobbling in other roost areas within within uh, hearing distance, and it's just it was wild times back then. And now, you know, we're lucky now to be able to get on one or two birds a season, and you know, you spend a week on that bird, and he either gets killed or moves off, and then. You sit in the woods and hear nothing. For those the rest two, of the year. those two, two or three birds that we chased around last year would literally move half a mile throughout the day, go across five different properties, go in front of three different hunters. Yep. Yeah. We never ended up killing one. Yep. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, I'm going to, I might be able to spend a little bit more time on this uh, 
on this podcast video, I might actually overlay some video on this one. So if you're watching on the YouTube, this one might end up being a little bit more interesting than our normal video of us just sitting here talking. Um, if you guys are listening on Spotify or Apple, anything like that, please leave a review. Um, you know, do the stars, leave a comment on YouTube, and anything, anything of that nature is very helpful um, for the metrics on podcasts. We need audience interaction to, to be seen and to grow and to keep moving. So we would appreciate it if you guys could do that. Um, I'll let you guys go for a little bit here if you want to get in. I don't know what you want to get into next if you want to talk about. Uh, I was just going to talk about our guns a little bit. I did a little bit of research on the new craze of the TSS, so the tungsten turkey rounds that everyone's using these days yeah that's uh that's and there's some the... controversy that goes along with this oh yeah always anything with hunting there's always controversy anything new yep anything that goes against yeah the, uh, grain. To, and to be perfectly blunt and honest um we have two different we have three vastly different kinds of turkey hunters sitting at this table i carry around a cannon of a boomstick mm-hmm. remington 870 old school yeah, three, three and, and a half, half inch. inch like literal cannon heavy bam Ethan carries TSS, tiny little single shot, 410. 410. Uh, stick in my pocket. So he's one of the one newer hand. age style guys. And Isaac just doesn't care about turkey hunting at all. So he just carries well, any, Anytime I'm in the woods, I'm carrying one of these cameras you guys are watching on, basically. Both times that Isaac has killed in his life has simply been because he's batting cleanup. He was mm-hmm. running a camera or he was a secondary guy and he was batting cleanup. And the first hunter missed with their bow, actually. And then I shot him with a shotgun after yeah, that. Yeah, both your gobblers. Then, but you, had, you did kill a Jake once with your bow in the mm-hmm. fall. But, years ago, <laughs> years ago. We'll be able to tell that story a little bit later. But, yeah, so Isaac wants to start yeah. us off. So just to hit on the TSS, that's the big, huge craze. Basically, it started like five five or six years ago. They started making tungsten shot shells. So if anybody doesn't know tungsten, it's a lot more dense than lead. So it's a lot heavier. So you can use a lot smaller pellet in the turkey load. So traditionally, a lead turkey load is four shot, six shot, or what? Four, five, or six. Yeah, four, five, or six. I mean, I use mine is a six shot that I use. But the TSS, so the tungsten shot, is around seven or nine shot. And then actually the federal premium, the one that I did some research on, is seven and nine. So they pack both of those into the same shell, and you can get about twice as many pellets into that same size shell that you could with a regular lead shot. So what that does is give you a better pattern. And I did a little bit of research today on the... Uh, the cost of these turkey loads, because that's a huge thing too. So the the turkey loads that Caleb shoots, the Remington Nitro Turkey, I think you shoot, or well, the Winchester. Yeah, so I, I I shot the Remington Nitro Turkey for a long time, three inch, and then I believe they had the th- I, I can't remember if they had those in three and a halfs or not, but they definitely were three inch. Um, I did kill a lot of birds with them, and then I switched to the Winchester XR, which is like their um, flagship. I think it's like turkey. copper plated or something. Yeah, yeah, it yeah makes I shoot that in three and a half. Makes it a little bit heavier. But just to go down the price, for those Remington regular lead nitro turkeys, you can get 20 gauge or 12 gauge, but the price is basically $12 to $18 per 10. So you're running about $1.20 to $1.80 a piece. And we go over to the Federal Premium TSS. It's a mix of seven and nine shot. Those are $42 to $80, depending on your gauge. <laughs> so obviously the, the 12 gauge, three and a half inch is going to be the most expensive, but then the four tens are the least for five so that's between eight and sixteen dollars around piece around for these shells what this gives you though according to this video i watched on youtube it was actually a pretty good video they did a ballistic gel test and they also did a pattern test of lead versus the tss and you got about double the foot pounds of energy with the tss at all the ranges throughout the spectrum so they both started about the same because coming out of the muzzle, they're about the same velocity, same power. But then once you start getting past 20 yards, the TSS is about double the foot-pounds of energy. So at 100 yards with the TSS, you have the same energy as about 50 yards with the lead. So they're claiming that you could kill a turkey at 100 yards with these. I haven't seen any proof of that happening yet. There's been a couple of videos I've seen pop up on YouTube, and I haven't watched them yet, of guys like you know, practicing shooting in a turkey at 100 yards. But I'm sure it's going to happen this year just because of how explosive the craze has been with people using TSS. So if we see a 100-yard turkey kill this year, I wouldn't be surprised. You know, it's crazy to me because turkey hunting used to be, you know, there's there's a lot of cultural 
aspect of turkey hunting and it used to always be about calling the birds in really close and shooting them some states require you to call them in. you're not even allowed to stalk them or reap them or yeah, that's a weird them. pennsylvania rule yeah so like you know they're part of some legal area is you have to call them in but now we're getting to the point where you're going to shoot at a turkey 75 to 100 yards out in a field call it a day I'm never going to do that. No. It takes no, the fun out of it. No. Yeah, that's I, great. Five years ago, we couldn't shoot a deer at 100 yards with a slug gun. Yeah. Now you're shooting turkeys at 100 yards yeah. with a shotgun. I, th- I feel like this is irresponsible as well. I think the longest I've ever actually shot at a turkey and killed it was probably 30 yards. I've taken a couple longer shots and missed them, Isn't there yeah, we, which is something somewhere? I don't want to do ever again. Because yeah, we, it just we have a work. famous video from, oh gosh, it had to be 2008 maybe, something like that. Tyler shooting a turkey. I got it. Yeah, I got, when, it. I got when, it listed. When you guys here. were teenagers, so a long time ago, and we actually filmed it. He shot this. He ended up shooting the turkey five or six times. We call it the zombie turkey. Yeah. yeah. So, and the first shot was like fifty some yards, and then they were increasingly about sixty and forty, and the last final kill shot was like forty yards. Yeah. I think. Yeah, we'll talk about that in the story section. It's it's kind of wild. So it's going to be interesting to see how this goes. There is some benefits, obviously, because you're going to have more killing power. And less toxic toxicity to the environment because of the lead. Yeah, that's that's another one that's of them to things. Be, uh, yeah, to be we, we don't know. We don't have an opinion on that one yet, really. Yeah, because how much of this lead from missing turkeys or shooting at turkeys has contributed to any negative decline in wildlife over the years? We don't really know. But then everybody always argues, well, they had to mine the tungsten. What was that process? It yeah, might have been right, more right. More detrimental to the environment than just mining the lead. Aren't they saying it's dangerous to other hunters as well? If you're 100 yards across the field. I also read that. So there has been many instances of turkey hunters being shot accidentally. And a lot of times it's at further yardage through brush, through trees, through stuff like that. Somebody sees movement in turkey woods and shoots at it and ends up being another hunter. Yeah, I feel like turkey hunters get shot more on average than deer hunters. Oh, I don't have any stats to back that up per se, but... I've seen a lot more stories, and yeah. they're saying that's going to be a problem with this TSS because of how much energy it retains downrange. Yeah. You get shot at 100 yards with this, it's like being shot at 50 yards with lead. Yeah, that's and the, not good. And the lead shot at 100 yards out to about 150 is basically, if you have a coat on, it's barely going to go through yeah. that. Into yeah. the skin. Yeah, because the, don't they say it flattens and then it loses its velocity? Yeah, the, the lead will flatten. When it flies through the air, it's, it starts to flatten, and then as soon as it hits a surface, it really kind flattens just, out. Yeah. So I have not seen any instances of TSS rounds being shot into another hunter yet. That'll be interesting when it happens. Yeah, unfortunately, it probably will happen eventually. Yeah. You we'll read about it. Which is not good for anyone. No. no Industry bad. or the hunters themselves. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty much all I have on the TSS, I think. I'll throw out some of my quick facts that I came across reading today. Um, there's 6.5 million wild turkeys in the United States, and that's up from 200,000. So at, at, at one point, we were down to 200,000 in the United States, and then the whole uh, relocation and... This all happened in redistri- the 80s, yeah, 90s? Redistribution, uh, 60s. Six, redistribution oh, 60s. of the turkeys started happening, 50s, 60s, 70s. Um, the Curl and the Fox documentary that we kind of briefly touched on, Mossy Oak Channel. Um, if you're a turkey hunter, it's all the rage on social media right now, so I'm sure you've seen it and you will see it. Um, just give it a watch. It's a great documentary, probably the best documentary ever made on turkey hunting, and it just kind of goes over the history of that and some of the, the stuff. But 6.5 million turkeys now in the United States, 2.5 million turkey hunters, so um, definitely less than the deer hunters, but uh, the numbers are growing. Um the numbers I found that there's 11 million deer hunters in the United States, so um, significantly less turkey hunters, about a quarter of the amount. Mm-hmm. Um, and that actually probably jives with our group of guys. I'd say about a quarter of our group actually cares and hunts about, you know, cares a lot about turkey hunting and spends time actually doing it. And they definitely spend way less than a quarter amount of the time hunting. Yeah, me, Ethan, and Dylan are the only... Me, Ethan, and Dylan spend a lot of time doing it, and then Matt comes with us every once in a while. Tyler and Nick have started coming with us. Tyler's killed plenty of birds in his day. Matt's killed a few Mm -hmm. with us, but um, me, Ethan, and Dylan are the ones that really go hard. You know, guys like Isaac and Luke and some of the other dudes, they're, they're not really that into it. They'll go maybe on the weekend or when they get some time, but they don't make any plans for it. Um, we drag Isaac along on all our trips to film us, yep. and spend time around turkey camp. But Yeah, maybe I'll shoot a turkey this year. We'll see. Yeah, turkey is just not really his... Uh, so there was a recent change, what was it, two years ago? Ohio went from a two-bird state to a one-bird state. Yeah, and that's I, I think that's a good idea because uh, our turkey population has been going down, I do feel, locally. And most of the time, 
you know, the two turkey thing, the only guys that were killing two turkeys were the really good hunters. Mm -hmm. But it, it has it has slowed the number of turkeys getting killed a little bit. I know the numbers aren't as crazy. So there wasn't a ton of people shooting two turkeys, so that's not saving a ton of birds. But any bird it that we can save, some. yeah, any bird that we can save to move on to the next year or to do some breeding um, is a good thing because uh, mature gobblers are the only ones that breed. I know there's been a lot of discussion online last couple of years about that but it's kind of been proven by scientists that the jakes can't breed no. um, they will try to they will act tough they will get in big groups and push gobblers away to prohibit the gobbler from breeding but they themselves they're, are not. they're actually, simply not old enough and mature enough yeah they themselves are simply not doing any of the breeding so as much of bullies as they are acting uh, it's not helping the population any we've seen that here plenty of times where a big group of jakes will show up and the gobblers will be gone mm -hmm. i've actually watched jakes chase gobblers off and we've had you know farms with a big gang of jake shows up you're you're gonna have a hard time calling because when, a when you there. think about it, a Jake is what are they like eight nine months old? Yeah, and they'll weigh anywhere if from that. ten to you know we've had Jakes. I, I killed a Jake. My first turkey was a Jake that weighed like sixteen and a half, seventeen pounds as a Jake. So he was it, actually what I would call a jom. We'll get into that later. Because they're but. born, aren't they born about June, July? Yeah, I mean any time you know. I think the incubation is only thirty days. So thirty days the nest falling. is laid. You know, we got 30 days, and then the fawns are born, which we need some warmer. A green-up would be nice, but some warm, dry weather helps with the poults because wet weather is really bad for turkeys. Because of the flooding of the nests. Yeah, wet and cold, they'll just die, you know, being on the ground. You know, if it's those conditions, is not necessarily good. But uh, Before we go, go any further, I want to talk about, so the turkey population was down to 200,000. 200,000. And that was in the 60s? That was, or was, that, that was, that was nationwide. Was that basically that from, like, all, yeah. the, the late 1800s all the way up until the 60s? No, they we hunted them down. So the population okay. was greater in the early 1900s and, you know, settler times. Yeah. And we just hunted them down. Because it it, it is... That's why we have the rules that we have when it comes to turkey hunting, at least in Ohio, is you have to shoot them with a shotgun. Yep. They nope. have to be on the ground. They can't be in the roost. You can't shoot them at night, blah, 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 because that makes them harder to kill. Because if we say it was settlers' times and we needed to kill turkeys for food, you, take a you go out with out a there. rifle, Yeah, you go out at dusk and shoot them all in a field, right you shoot the them tree. all in the roost. Yeah. So that's that kind of goes with the TSS talk. If these shotguns are becoming more lethal at longer ranges, are we kind of getting away from that limitation? Yeah, there's people that are going to not like that at all, but... It's true, uh, though. It's it, true, yeah. It, we're making if it... If you can you know, shoot them at 100 it, yards with a shotgun. It, it goes along with the crossbow and the corn pile debate for yep. deer hunting. We're yep. making it extremely easy to kill them again. If you can, yeah, if you can kill them at 100 yards out in the field, you know, it, that that's a problem. And the only thing that's on these turkey side is the rules we make for hunting. Yeah, yeah we, so, have, we have made it harder on ourselves because... Uh, you know, calling a turkey in close and shooting in the head at 30 yards is a hard thing to do. Yes. But, you know, to have one, you know, strut out of range at 70 yards is not a hard thing to do. No. Because how many, to shoot that bird. Yeah, now, how many times have we had birds oh, lay up at 70 yards? I mean. Countless times. Yes, countless times. It, I don't know how many times it happened last year. It happened a lot. Yeah. It happened to me five times, actually. Well, we'll get into that later. So that's too. something to look, <laughs> look about in the future with the advancements. And this goes on the deer hunting side as well with the advancements in deer hunting that – Maybe we're going to have to start limiting somehow. Well, they have started slackening the rules a little bit too. Like it used to be, you only could hunt till noon all season long, and now they're opening it up so you can hunt all day. I think Ohio's three weeks now. Yeah, it was it was originally two? I think well, it was originally three. none, and then two, and yeah. then now it's three. You can hunt the whole day. So, yeah, they're making things easier, and you know it's harder on the turkeys, easier on the hunters. Yep. Which I'm, I don't think I'm a fan of, to be honest. I don't with think you. so either. I'd rather it, I like the traditional way, and I, you know, I wish it was still kind of harder. But and there's a lot of archery hunters out there too. I guess we didn't talk about archery hunting. Yeah, archery hunting is, uh, you know, archery hunting for turkeys is kind of like recurve hunting for deer around here. You it, know? It's, it's its own it's, beast because yeah. most archery hunters are sitting in a ground blind with decoys, waiting for that turkey to come in. <laughs> and it's some. weird, you know, five percent of the time, the turkeys will just, you know, you can you can have that hunt where you're sitting there and you're blind with a couple decoys out. And five gobblers come in and start strutting around, and it's extremely easy. And you're and anyone watching will be like, "Well, you know, why don't you just do that all the time?" It, it doesn't, doesn't exactly happen that like way that. often. It, and then they say that shooting a turkey with a bow is a super hard feat. But when that happens, when they come running into your decoys and you have a ground blind set up, you're shooting a turkey at twelve yards with your bow. You know, pretty big target. Yeah, when they're strutting it's, around, it's, it's, it's full not strutting hard. a circle. In yeah. that situation, when that happens, it's not hard at all. No. So that's 6.5 of all the major species of turkey? Yep. 
Yeah, so there's five subspecies. There's two species of turkeys, and then there's five subspecies of the wild. So I guess the... The North have, American wild Yeah, turkey. so the two subspecies are the North American and the oscillated turkey. So the oscillated turkey is that... It's like a different species. Pheasant look, or uh, peacock-colored, bluer, very fancy, no beard, and they don't gobble. And they're they in a weird... Mexico, like Yucatan Peninsula, yep, yep, Cancun yep, yep. area. Very right. big spurs, no beard. Um, they have a weird like gobble type call thing. Um, it's they are like in the wild turkey kinda. family, but they're not the wild turkeys that you think of here up in in, in the states. And there's five subspecies of the states turkeys. And I don't know if I'll be able. I might be able to list them off the top of my head. Eastern Merriman's, Rio, Golds, and f- Osceola. Osceola, the Florida. Yeah. Yep. And then there's, in some cases, there's mixtures of both all of those. As yeah, well. like especially out west where you go, it's kind of hard to, to you know, so the Easterns and the Rios, right? Or the Eastern and the Merrimans, like. Yeah, kinda... that, that was very strange. So you go out west, Nebraska is really f- famous for marrying turkey hunting. But then when we were in Montana. We were seeing Easterns. We were seeing Easterns yeah. again. They were 100% Eastern turkeys. They weren't Marians. Yep. We got plenty Strut, of videos strutting, away strutting in feet, Easterns, yeah. Yeah, in, in pastures that are on the foothills of mountains. And then we also saw turkeys at 6,000, 7,000 feet. Mm-hmm. Hen, at least one hen. You know, So there, there was turkeys up in the mountains. There was turkeys down the bottom. So there's a mixture of species in those areas. And the only, I think Jay's the only person I know that shot a Marian. He shot a Marian in Nebraska with his Spencer. bow. Spencer. Shot. Spencer shot. Yeah, one. Spencer's fast. In year, Idaho. Shot some. Yeah, Idaho. Was that a Marian or was it an Eastern? The Mar- it was the Marians. Yeah, with the real frosted tips. Yeah. Him and his family were out there, Dylan, Hannah. Yeah, yeah, that's something maybe we'll look into the future is some destination turkey hunts. We haven't really... I would love Says to... Says a guy that doesn't turkey hunt. Yeah, I mean, I would love to do that. I know Jay, we talked about this on a couple of podcasts that Uncle Jay was in here, but he is going to do some... He, he has already killed some turkeys out west, and this year when he's going out bear hunting, he's going to do a little turkey hunting. Is he taking so. a shotgun or a bow? Probably I, that a bow. I don't, that I don't know. I don't know I don't know if he's taking his bow. Didn't he ask you if you had a shotgun to give him? I think he's taking Dylan's shotgun, if I remember. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. He so asked, maybe he is taking a shotgun. He asked if there was a shotgun he could Cause take. Because he's going out bear rifle hunting, so I don't think he was taking his bow. No. No. Um, the thing about wild turkeys is their vision. Um, so when it comes down to some more of these facts, you know, they, they can hear pretty much equal to humans. They don't have the ability. You know, they probably smell equal to humans too. They don't have the ability to differentiate smell, so they're not going to wind you. You're not going to get winded by a turkey like you would a deer we or don't a bear. Think so. Maybe. I mean, from what scientists from have what said. Scientists but their vision is crazy. So they are three times more clear than 2020. They can see in full color, and they have a 270 degree field of view. So I, we've been busted more by turkeys on their sight than anything else. I don't know how many times we've been sitting there bored. Um, after doing a bunch of calling to a gobbling bird, sit there for an hour, nothing happens, not paying attention, screwing off. We make a move or go to check our phone or and there you are, sit the- up and stretch, and there's a gobbler at 20 yards. Yeah, see the redhead came in away. silent that we didn't know about, takes off. I mean, it, that, that's a common occurrence for us. And a big advantage a turkey has is they're they're constantly scared. They're constantly yeah. scared of predators. Big old buck walking through the woods isn't always scared of things in the woods, but a turkey is scared yeah. of everything. Yeah, every little sound. They, so they, one little mess up and that turkey's gone yep yep um both toms and hens will strut i know obviously strutting is a sign of a, a tom but we have we've seen hens and strut gobble. yeah we've seen hens strut and we've seen hens gobble on video in the past not often you know this is a very rare thing but both hens and toms will strut and gobble you have a trail camera video of a hen like strutting as clear as day yeah just strut around blow, spitting. strut right by our uh it's right by one of our watering holes just this this hen is just strutting right by and then one time during the covid years when we were doing a lot of public land hunting we were public land hunting we watched the hen southern from, ohio from a couple hundred yards away we were real up high she was real down low and we watched this hen gobble her head off for about 20 minutes and, and it was have, a weird sounding didn't we gobble. have some theories about that we think maybe the hen was on a nest and it was trying to <sighs> Yeah, I, I don't know how smart or how evasive they would be for predators in that way, but we think we bumped her off her nest up high. She went down low and then was trying to coax us yeah. down there. It was almost like a like a kill deer, like the kill deer bird, how they'll go play the fake dead. wing yeah, thing they'll that start, they do. They'll start calling it to draw you away from their nest. This turkey we clearly bumped. It went way down, probably 700 yards away, and started gobbling. And we actually went down towards it, and it wouldn't run away. It clearly knew we were there. We but had some gobblers come out there, too. We feel like it was drawing us away. I can't remember if those gobblers were the same hunt, a different hunt, earlier in the hunt, later in the hunt, but we were in that same spot on public, and we had two gobblers come out. Mm-hmm. 
goblin. Which yeah, that was another able... that was another hunt. If you had TSS, you would have killed a turkey down there probably. Yeah, I mean, I had a clear shot at a half strut bird, but it was fifty yards. He was going away. We were running out of time because mm-hmm. it was getting close. And there was kind of some. To was noon. there some brush that he kind of went behind? Yeah, or? of course. And you're always yeah. <laughs> you're always kind of shooting through brush. So that's a, yeah. Brush. Mark one for the TSS if we were using it. Um, you can tell the turkey's sex by the droppings. Actually, um, males have a J shape and be bigger, and females would be spiral or straight. What um, does a turkey dropping look like? I don't know. Like a, it's like one like turn. Like a goose but, poop. Yeah, <laughs> but like a, a gobbler will have a J to it. Interesting. Which is kind of weird. What about the tracks? The tracks the same. Obviously, uh, the, the gobbler are middle bigger. toe three inches. So if you have a turkey track with a middle toe that's three inches, and if you see gobbler and hen tracks next to each other, you'll be able to tell right yeah, away. Hen tracks are pretty small. Big. I mean, they're only the middle toe is probably only two, two and a half inches, and the other toes it it's got a really small footprint. A gobbler track is like terrible. Yeah, we're pretty bad at turkey hunting, so we have lots of pictures and videos of turkey tracks <laughs> because B-roll. we don't have actual turkeys. Um. I mean, that's really, I don't have much else when it comes to the turkey facts. Like I said, I didn't say anything about their ranges or. No, so that's one thing that they're studying a lot right now. They're doing these gobbled studies and they're trying to. I would love to know the season to season range because obviously during deer season, most of the times the turkeys are not here. No, and if they are, they're flocked up up far away. And the flocks are usually hens and jakes, which tells me it's a group of you know hens with their poults from the the spring prior mm-hmm. that are now mature yes yeah, smaller group very rarely do we have a big flock of hens jakes and gobblers in the fall every once in a while you'll get that bachelor group of gobblers come through in the fall but uh, it's normally hens and jakes and then you know right around this time of year you know up to a month before season this year it yeah, seems a little bit slower than normal but they'll start to spread out and we'll have gobblers move in um the years that I'm really paying attention and doing a lot of scouting with a lot of trail cameras and going out and listening in the mornings, I'll notice these gobblers, sometimes they'll show up, you know, three weeks before the season, a gobbler will, and he'll be on my trail cameras and gobbling in the mornings, and then he'll slowly start petering out, and he'll leave our area before the season even opens. So they, they're they nomadic. They'll come in. Um, we've had some color face birds that we've been able to prove this with. We had a bird a couple years ago that had a amber section of his beard. So right in the, you know, he had 10, 12 inch beard and right in the middle was like three or four inches of gold right in the middle of the beard. And actually that was, isn't that considered like a fungus patch or something? I don't they know. Say? They, they talk about beard rot, frozen beards, you know, all these things, but he had, regardless, he had an amber patch in his beard and he was here before the season started, but about a week before the season opened, he disappeared. You know, maybe he was killed by a hunter in youth season, but I don't maybe. think any of the other hunters around that year had killed it. You know, had killed a bird. But you know, about a week before the season, he disappeared. I never got a video of him again for the rest of the year. I ended up killing a good gobbler that year, a different one that had a full beard with no amber in it. Um, then we had a situation where there was a full grown gobbler without a beard. Yeah. So we had the one year. I, I want to say it was almost two years in a row. One year for sure. I actually had that listed in one of our stories. One of our main farms, we had a fully mature gobbler that we could have killed twice on video with no beard. But if you look at the video later on a big, you know, on a big screen on the computer, you can see spurs. So he had full spurs. He had a full fan and he was gobbling, but no beard at all. It was completely rotted off. That farm has had a lot of birds with rotted beards. And that's what makes turkey hunting a little bit interesting because we're not technically hunting the male turkeys by yeah. rule yeah, you're hunting, hunting a, a turkey with turkeys. a beard they don't know why hens grow beards so hens will grow beards and they're usually not very good beards or they're really wispy even if they are long but science from what i've read i read on audubon and nwtf and there was one other website i was reading on um oh u.s fish and wildlife they don't know why why some hens and yeah. s- on, on some of our farms particularly the one it's a pretty common occurrence. You'll have 10 hens out in a field eating. You'll get a trail camera video of them, and two of them will have beards. Some people say that the bearded ones can't reproduce, but I don't think that's true. I but I don't know if I can prove that. But A lot of these things are all hearsay because we can't prove it. Yeah. There's They're, just, overall, there's, even though there has been a lot of, you know, there's the NWTF and these other companies or these other corporations, and there's been some research put in turkeys, it's nowhere near what deer and elk and bear have got, yeah. you know, put into them over the years. Even though they are very popular, probably the second most popular big game animal, I feel like the knowledge of what's going on with these wild turkeys is just a little bit less, and especially less than deer. Yeah. Especially. So what is the, I don't know if you know, the legal... Length does it have to be an inch long? Does it have to be just has to have a long? beard? Just a beard. A beard doesn't matter. Single how hair. Single hair counts. Okay. You know, I've seen birds with single hairs mm-hmm. because they got broken off. Yeah, or broken off like... or ripped out or rotted or whatever it is. 
And that's just like the record turkeys. They have typical and non-typical, and like the non-typical has like eight beards, and they all have just a couple. Yeah, strands. so they'll 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 pluck all the feathers out of the chest, and you'll find as long as the where the beard starts is separated by a gap, you know there'd be turkeys with anywhere from two to I think one turkey had like twelve different beards. Mm-hmm. And the first turkey you shot had two beards. Two, two it had a really small second. Small it was ones. it was like, and he's what, and that this is another weird thing. I don't know what you would call that first turkey I shot. He had feathers in the middle that were slightly longer, but not by much. He had three quarter inch spurs, like half half to three quarter inch spurs. So they weren't Jake nubs. So he they could weren't, have been they weren't small, rounded Jake spurs. They had a point to them, but they weren't an inch long. And he had two beards. There were one was like four, one was like four and a half. So I guess small. this could be a turkey that was born later in the summer. Say he wasn't born in June; he was born in October. Well, I maybe. would say. Because it early, is possible. I would say it's hard to say. Yeah, he was he born really early and just got bigger before the next year, or was he born or really, really late? late? Yeah, yeah. And that's know. why he's bigger. You know, because most turkeys, you know, in the spring, a Jake is a one-year-old turkey, right? I mean, less than one year old. He's from the breeding season that year. The prior. Year. The prior. So, so yeah. nine months, so ten nine, months, nine, ten months, eleven right. months, maybe even a year. Yeah. So this bird, for whatever reason, just had longer spurs than that. We've had birds here. We had a bird show up one time that had completely white wings, and he was only around for a couple of days, and then he left. Mm-hmm. So he was a bird that would be very easy to distinguish in person and on trail camera and from gone. all the other birds because his wings, so the entire wing was completely white, both sides, and then he left. Do we have any pie balls or albinos in Didn't the docket right now? F- I thought we had a young one last year somewhere. I don't know of any on the docket now. Remember. We did at one time have a pure albino, pink eyes. Or pink head, completely white, and we had pictures toe. of him from this a big, Polt. Yeah, this big as a Polt. We so this was a wild, wild born yeah, albino, wild born turkey. albino turkey. He might have been technically leucistic because I think he didn't. I don't think his eyes were pink. We got a couple trail camera pictures of him really young. A couple trail camera pictures and videos of him when he was probably three or four months old. And then that following spring, he had moved his range about a mile, sort of huntable in an area uh, on one of our satellite farms. It's actually one of our main farms, but a mile from our main farm. He was sort of huntable. He was in the field opening day. We weren't able to get any video. He was very far away. It was a bunch of jakes running around that day. He ended up getting killed by a neighbor even farther, half a mile more down the road than that. So he never made it past being a jake. And it's interesting for turkeys because people really don't give a shit about albino turkeys. Just kind of due to the fact that all domestic turkeys look like that. Yeah, so everyone... So when you shoot one, you're like, oh, you shot a turkey yeah, from the fair. Yeah, there's that cultural thing where if you shoot a white bird or a smoke bird or a Narragansett phase bird or a red phase bird, because turkeys have all these different phases they can be. They can be black. They can be black barred turkeys that their wings have no white on them. Mm-hmm. All these color phases, if you shoot one, the first thing the person says is, oh, shot a domesticated bird that got loose. That's the very first thing that's said. Sometimes that Which is true. Sometimes it's possible because there's such a fine line between a domesticated turkey, especially on some of these farms where they free range. Yeah, and there's there's a free range decorative breed. So yeah. we're not talking about Tyson turkey, you know, the one you're eating at Thanksgiving that weighs That's 60, 60 pounds, pounds. Yeah. And, and nasty, no beard, the feathers are all gross. No, these, you know, this these are turkey, farm turkeys that sometimes you'll walk out the door and it looks like a regular turkey and they're strutting in your front yard. There was a house down the street a couple years ago, I remember, that had a domesticated gobbler that had normal... He, he looked like a wild turkey, yeah, but he was really, domesticated. He would gobble at us all morning. You would morning. drive by and he'd be on the front porch of the house strutting, gobbling at you, but like he would never mo- go more than about 100 yards from that property and he never came over... You know, it would be very hard to distinguish that bird from a wild one if you'd see him out in the woods, but he was Just, domesticated. And their mentality is so different, even though the, the species is ex- exactly the same. Yeah. We do have a lot of turkeys on our farm and that we've killed that have that, uh, their tail fans will have one or two white mm-hmm. barred feathers. I've, yeah, I've seen one, a, yeah, there's one, one in there. there. There's one, I have one or two at my house where the middle two tail feathers have white bars going up, which is also some type of color phase. I would have loved to kill that white winged bird, but. Never really had an opportunity. Now, when they did any of these, when they reintroduced a lot of these birds, was there any domestic genes in those, or did they use pure wild No, turkeys? they used pure wild turkeys. Okay. They were using those cannon guns, yeah, the nets, net the net cannons to net pure wild. So they, at first, they tried the farm thing, and it, it didn't, didn't work. work out. didn't work. They all died. They couldn't, they couldn't figure it out. So then they went to only moving wild turkeys, and that worked. So that's how they... That's another thing with turkey hunting is it, it takes a turkey hunter to actually respect another turkey hunter. Yeah. When you talk to a non-hunter and you tell them you're going turkey hunting, they're going, what do you mean you're going turkey hunting? 
Like, how hard can that be? You know, they see him right. gobble around Walmart's parking lot. Well, it's just like the deer, you know, you talk to these non-hunters about deer, and they're like, well, I got five bucks to lay down in my rhododendron bush patch yeah. every day, yeah. you know? So it's hard. But turkey hunting has a certain stigma to the non-hunters. Yeah, and we're not in a very culturally big turkey hunting area here. It's way bigger in the south. It's way bigger in Pennsylvania. You know, those are two places where turkey hunting is more of mm-hmm. a cultural thing than here. More turkeys get killed in the state of Pennsylvania than I think any other state. If I remember reading that correctly, which we maybe we'll get one this year. We we've been trying. We've God tried dang. so hard. We've been trying so hard. We've gotten close so many times. And this crappy trout season we're having maybe will lead us to go to Pennsylvania for turkey hunting more. Yeah. Well, I'm going no matter what. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait. Now we're going to get into our turkey hunting stories. Um, we have a bunch over the years, but I'm going to start with probably the, the first one, the first bird that we ever killed here in the family. Uh, me and Dad went by ourselves. When I was young. So he killed his first bird in 2013, which means I was 13. 2003. Pro- or 2003, sorry. Killed our first bird in 2003. 21 years ago. When I was 13. And we definitely went a year, two, or three prior to that unsuccessfully, just kind of self-taught. Um, the first bird that we killed, we were here on the home farm. It was like mid-morning, at least 10 o'clock, maybe later. You know, I'd had Dad out hunting all day. He was tired. We went up to just a clearing in the woods. Uh, he sat down against a tree. I sat down maybe 20 yards away. Uh, he was using his single shot 16 gauge. Was he using the 16 or the 20? I think he was using the 16. And then I was using, I believe at the time, I might have been using his 20 then. Okay, yeah. So I was using his 20. He was using the 16. Both single shot guns from the 70s. Oh, yeah. Um, probably Pieces not using anything turkey load wise. No. Well, no, uh, probably not. Probably not. And I do remember I just sat there with an old box call and I called and called and called <laughs> and called <laughs> and called for an hour. And then out of nowhere, you know, we were barely wearing camo, barely sitting still. Out of nowhere. Dad has a picture somewhere. I think there's a picture in the shop there. It's in the shop. He's got like a flannel on under like a camo jacket or something i have a picture for sure have it on my computer he might have definitely just on, a flannel on i think like he was one. wearing just a blue flannel <laughs> which is not a no no but i have a picture it's definitely on instagram i definitely have it on my computer somewhere it might be hanging up on the other side of the shop but all of a sudden boom, boom, this bird actually should actually that's that was a bad representation a good representation <laughs> jake gobble uh there was four jakes that gobbled at like 20 yards from dad and only they were 30 yards from me, 20 yards from Dad. Dad was in between me and the birds. He woke. He was dead ass asleep. The gobble woke him up. He, all I just I remember the bird. I remember calling the bird gobbled out of nowhere. I looked up. I could see him all clear as day. Dad had woke up from the gobble. Just reached over and grabbed his gun. Bang! Shot in the head, and that was our first turkey. And it weighed like 12 pounds. 12 pounds. 12 tiny little jigs. And he tried plucking jinx. it. Yeah, we. I don't know how. I don't know what the eating arrangement was on that. I don't remember how we ate it, but that was our first bird. It was 21 years ago in the family. The very next year is when I killed my first bird. Uh, I had our uncle Rod, which is actually just like a distant cousin, actually, um, came in to call for us. He was an old school turkey hunter. Um, he'd been he, turkey hunting for a he'd while. He'd been turkey hunting since the beginning of turkey hunting. Still in turkey our, hunting in our area. Yeah, he's still turkey hunting to this day. Um, we agreed on youth weekend to have him come to help us do some calling. We were on the same ridge in our woods, just down a little bit to the west. Um, we had birds going off the off the roost like crazy goblin. And me and my dad were sitting together. Our Uncle Rod was just a little bit down from us. He was doing all the calling on his mouth call. And even though we had a gobbler hammering, um, two jakes ended up. I don't, and I don't know how they got to where they got or where they came from. They, they must have walked down into a valley and then came back up, but they were heading towards that gobbler. They, they must have obviously not been roosting with the gobbler. Um, and I remember just seeing a beard out front and I shot it. And that's when it was actually the job or whatever you want That was the double beard we were talking the about The double earlier. bearded 16 and a half pound double beard with, you know, half inch spurs bird was my first bird. Yeah, there's some pretty cool pictures of that. I used your old 20 gauge. Yeah. That, that Turkey's definitely, there's a picture of it on the other side of the shop over there. Um, so yeah, we back to back years. We killed a, Jake and this was long, long before we were filming anything. Yeah, yeah, before cameras. Um, Shit, we got cameras real quick after that though. Yeah, in two thousand four, we probably couldn't afford any cameras. No, I was fourteen years old, no job. So it wasn't too far before. 
Yeah, so then... Your first bird was 2006. And so that 2006 one was, is when we started filming. And that one was filmed. So that was our very first SBO filmed hunt, 2006. Um, we were hunting two neighbors over. And I don't know... So I was thinking about this the other day when I was getting ready for this podcast. How did we know to go there? Was it because of... Like, what What made us go to where we went? Did someone... Like, did Uncle Rod tell us that that was a good Maybe. spot? Did, did we set that blind up in the dark? Did we have it set up beforehand? I'm fairly certain... I, see, I don't know. I don't remember. Well, we were in I a, don't remember carrying the blind out. We were in I don't a doghouse ground blind. I don't remember carrying the blind in. Caleb had just gotten his brand new bow. Yeah. Hoyt laser, laser Tech. Hoyt Laser Tech. So he's like, I'm going to shoot turkey with his bow. Was it youth weekend or regular? Can't remember. Doesn't matter. We were... We were of youth age. Yeah. We were far. I mean, we were far in the woods, in this blind, in a valley, but the birds were roosting up on a ridge. By ourselves. Probably not completely legal, but. Here we go again with the outing ourselves thing. But I was 16. I was legal. I don't, I don't know, know what the could age is. I don't know how the age is. If I was, no, I was 15. Yeah. Regardless, we were kids hunting by ourselves. Well, how many minutes in are we? Yeah. It doesn't matter. We're going to come right as a ticket. Like I say fuck now? Yeah. <laughs> We're First swear, hour uh, it, for the audience, real quick, we've been trying to, ever since our Bear podcast, which was four or five podcasts ago, it got, went way off the rails with the the swearing and the just the I shot talking. That. It got yeah. a little bit it got a little bit wild, our Bear podcast, our Bear Hunt podcast with Uncle Jay. So we've we, been trying to- We didn't have any complaints, though. Yeah, I got some off, I got some non-official complaints from mm, people, but- Text messages yeah, and such. But regardless, we've been trying to reel in the adult content a little bit, so- so we're back to just trying to be a little bit more PC, but that was our first F word of the podcast. But yeah. regardless, Anyways, we, we were, were way back. We were teenagers way back in the woods hunting. Didn't really know what I was doing. I remember seeing the video. I was wearing army camo. You were wearing straight from what was the whiteies? Whiteies. Whiteies. Was the army surplus army store. Sur- so I had <laughs> woodland army cam- I even had a woodland hat, I think, like an army hat. Yeah, like a flex fit style yeah, yeah, type. Yeah. Like. Were you wearing the boonie hat? I can't remember. Maybe it wasn't, but, but there we is a video somewhere. You, you know, I'm sure you still have it. Oh yeah, so, yeah. It's in. It's we've used the video recent, kind of recently. Actually, last year I think I used it for turkey season, or maybe the year before. Regardless, um, we had army camo from when we were kids playing army men. You know that Isaac was wearing. I was using my bow. He was using his shotgun. And Caleb did what he does best: miss, yeah, <laughs> miss on film. But let's talk about the hunt <laughs> itself. Right off the roost, gobbler's going crazy. Caleb's calling, and we call in. What call was I using? Probably that spring-loaded double. No, no I, I think it was know. late calls at this point. It might even been mouth calls. Maybe. I'm sure if you watch the video, it'll show something. Dude, but we anyways. were filming with a potato. <laughs> yeah. We were literally – the quality of the video is bad. It, it is bad. It was so a it tape. Was a, it it was, was with a tape. High 8 yeah. tape. Mini. Yeah. High 8 mini, I think. Yeah. Sony camcorders. While you're telling the story, I'm going to find it. It's it was just here. it was just sitting in between us in the doghouse blind, f- facing forward. But when these gobblers were coming in, they were coming off a hill. So they were roosted a couple hundred yards off. They came in on a rope. Like, I don't know. We could never replicate this. They came in on a rope, five or six gobblers. At one point, Caleb did zoom in. And you zoomed in and got some pretty decent video, I remember. I think. Yeah. Yeah. They're, for, for what it was. So they come down the hill. And Caleb's like, I'm going to shoot a turkey with my bow. So he draws back and shoots at this turkey with his bow. Probably about 30 yards, I would say. Maybe 35. That went right between his legs. Right between his legs. Turkey runs down the hill. He might have been even closer than that. Maybe 25. Yeah. Regardless, he runs down the hill, turns around, and starts running back up the hill, and I shoot him with my shotgun about where he was when Caleb missed him with his bow. And what kind of shotgun was it? It was a boomstick, wasn't it? It was still a shotgun I used to this day. So it it was an NEF partner pump. 12 this, gauge. 12 gauge, yeah. This tur- this gun cost $150 with two barrels new. It's the heaviest shotgun ever. Yeah, it weighs about 10 pounds. Made in China. It's it's like a solid brick of steel, though. It's so much better than all the shit that they make nowadays. I think, is that the gun I just used on the pheasant hunt? Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Did you use my tur- my gun? Yeah, what other gun would I use? Yeah, the black one? Yeah. yeah. So that gun, it was made in China. It was super cheap back then. But if you put it next to a Remington 870 nowadays, it blows it out of the water in every aspect. Yeah, the way it made, feels, the way everything about it. Yeah, because they make guns better. Yeah, than no that. plastic on it, no aluminum. It's all steel. It's heavy as shit. But I, I remember I shot that turkey, and God knows if we were using turkey loads. We probably were. But it rolled down the hill like a deer. But then it wasn't dead when we ran up to it, and we had to dispatch it. 
Yeah, I don't know. Did you shoot a second time or you just do the head step thing? So, so this is 2007, it says. I don't know if that was right. It might no, have been. I think it was 2007. Okay, so we're, we're playing the video on the screen right now. Yeah, I found and, it. And There's my miss. God, this it, quality's bad. <laughs> so there was hens with those turkeys, Oh, we, had, we called the entire flock in. It had to be youth weekend. Oh, my gosh. So am I wearing a camel hat or am I wearing a Georgia Bulldogs hat? Uh, uh, I can't tell. Well, it is some sort of camel some, hat. It is some sort of camel hat. Classic. Yep. That was, anyways. That was that was what kind of got us hooked on filming hunts. I mean, we were successful. That was on the hunt first run. time we were successful. Um, and then we got into what year was it? Two thousand and nine. So that was two thousand seven, two thousand nine. Fast forward two years later. For whatever reason, so we had a gap in filming. We had a gap in cameras. I think for a while there, we didn't have a camera. No, we had the, cameras. There was something else more important than filming turkey hunts going well, on yeah, when, 16, when I was 18 16, years old. 16-year-old boys. Yeah, we just we kind of went through a phase where the filming hunts went to the side for a couple of years. But then 2009, we started filming heavy again. In 2009's turkey season, we filmed crazy heavy again. Um, a bunch of good – we killed two birds on camera that year and had a bunch of other good hunts. The zombie turkey was from that year. It's our very first YouTube video. So if you go back to – if you go on our YouTube channel, sort from oldest, the number one first video we ever put on there was the zombie turkey. And it was a bird that me and Tyler hunted at a farm that he no longer owns. He used to own this farm. Uh, he no longer does. We, for a couple of days, we were kind of getting closer and closer to these birds. We were hunting them. Uh, they were coming out in different places. Um on this particular day, there was another bird with a double beard that we were actually really wanting to kill. But on mm-hmm. this particular day, this bird came out first, circled our decoys. Tyler had a he had a decent shot at about 35 yards, didn't take it. The bird started broke his strut and started walking away and so got to shot. probably 40, 45. Shot, bird went down, flopping like crazy. And then stopped. The moving. double beard was still in the field. So we I left my camera on the bird that Tyler had shot started calling at the double beard who was, you know, 200 yards away, 150, 200 yards away. Uh, and Drew was trying to figure out what was, that bird was trying to figure out what had happened. Um, and in the meantime, while we're doing that, we happened to glance back over and the bird that Tyler shot, this is maybe a minute later, 45 seconds to a minute later, just gets up. It was laying there. It stopped flopping. For several minutes. And then got up and started walking with a tucked in wing and, in a, and it was walking like in a circle like a like a raccoon with distemper like it was just walking in a circle so tyler he had two shots left in his gun at that point bang shoots at it turkey starts running but he starts running in a big loop bang again and i remember shot. so the field was really dry so there was dust flying up every time yeah he you'd shot. see so you could the, see his the, pattern where it was hitting and sometimes it hit behind the turkey sometimes he was so far away that it just kind of hit around the turkey yeah so he shot his next two shots, and then uh, it was out of ammo, so I gave him my gun. Which I'm not sure the legalities of that. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, but or, he, right was, yeah, like, or he reloaded. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Regardless, and, he took the second did shot. Did he climb out of the blind? Uh, I told him to climb out of the blind, but he didn't. So he just kept shooting. And then the sixth shot, I believe, was the one. The bird actually was still – you got to you gotta, – understand if you're if you're trying to think about this while you're listening to your car the bird's just running in a big 20 yard circle yeah giant he's not circle. running away he's running he, in a he probably circle. does like three so laps every shot is at noon and then like you know six o'clock and then <laughs> noon and then six o'clock and then finally on his last lap he gets a little bit closer probably only 20 yards on, and know. shot was, number six far. shot number six tyler hit him and one of them ro- one of them pellets got lucky hit him right in the dome and he did a backflip like full speed backflip and then flopped around and then Tyler. Then there's was like, a, there's I was a, like, fuck you. There's a famous <laughs> adolescent, <laughs> fuck you. Because <laughs> yeah, Tyler hit puberty about five years after the rest of us. <laughs> but that was the zombie turkey. First video ever on our YouTube. Uh, the quality is just, the quality so is bad. better than the quality from your turkey in 2007, but the quality still is not great. still not Cameras great. have come a long way. Cameras have come. That was before big YouTube, though. So that was us watching on our box TVs. Oh, yeah. yeah before, right. No, was, you, you couldn't, couldn't get watch YouTube it on, on TV. TV. It was only. Well, the I'm just saying, like. Yeah. yeah VCR. Yeah. We made DVDs. Um, Ethan, I'll let you talk for a little bit since I've been going on. We can tell, you can tell the story of your first bird. My first bird was, what, two years ago? No, last year. Last? No. Or, yeah, two, two years, years ago. ago. Two, 22. Yeah, I was still in the Navy. Is, I guess it is uh-huh. 24. I didn't realize it's 24. You killed. No, that's the year that. You watch the bird get killed in front of you. 
on the home farm. Yep. The video we're watching right yeah. now. Yeah. And then uh, I was home from the Navy for a week. Dylan took me out. Well, we went out together on the home farm. He was calling. I was sitting there shooting with his gun. There's a group of birds. And we only had a uh, flock of jakes around, which I didn't care. And I was home for a week. I was going to kill a turkey. Yeah, and this was one of the years where there was no gobbler on the farm. There was one, and it got killed. Yeah. That bird it got, got killed, killed by the neighbor opening weekend. opening weekend in front of us. You can watch it on the Yeah, so I was home, and I wanted to kill a turkey. Dylan, we went out. He called the whole flock in, and it was pretty cut and dry. Yeah, the shot was like, what, five feet? Yeah, 30, <laughs> 30 minutes into the daylight and just got my first jake. And you shot the wrong bird. I did. There was yeah. a bigger Jake, and yeah. you shot the smallest one. There was basically. a job. We call him a job because I got footage of him that year in a bunch of different places. Um, Strutting with he like gobbles a gobbles like beard. a man. Yeah, I but I had seven heads floating in yeah. front of me, just yeah. mixing in between. I, I want to make sure I didn't shoot two because it was the first year they went to a one bird limit, so I didn't want to double whack them. Yeah. So I picked one out that was by itself and just laid it down. So and my was, and, and my notes here, my next story takes place in the same place as that story and the story preceding that with the the neighbor killing the bird this one corner of our farm is just like the best turkey hunting spot we have um i have killed three birds there in my life could have killed two more if it wasn't like i guess i shouldn't say could have killed two more i killed three birds there ethan killed his bird there there's the possibility of me killing a couple other birds there, but the hunt just didn't quite go perfect, but there was an opportunity birds in range. Just a very good spot. Lots of filming of birds there. Yeah. Um, the, the situation he talked about with the neighbor killing our bird, I say our bird because it was the bird we were hunting. It wasn't really our bird. He was coming in, and we could have killed him that day, but the neighbor just got a shot at him first. We didn't know each other was there. It was a long story. You can see the Zane's episode, Zane's bird episode on YouTube if you want to see it. Um, then Ethan killed his bird there. I've killed two birds in that spot, that same spot, without calling. So twice I have killed birds without uh, without uttering a single call. Because that's just one, where they come. Where they come. Yeah, it's, it's you know, you, sometimes you get very lucky. They don't roost in the same trees every night around here, but there are certain areas where they'll roost more often. And if they're roosting in that corner, you can get in there real early, set up against a tree, and they'll just fly down your lap. That happened with me in 2019 on the video that we call the gift. Um, that bird just came, that bird was, there was three, there was actually, it was weird. That that year it was kind of hard to buy a bird for a while. And then all of a sudden that di- particular day, there was three gobblers um, roosted right there in the corner of that field. Uh, I got in set up. I didn't realize they were that close. I, it, I got in there really early as it started lighting up. Birds hammering only 50 yards in front of me. I decided, you know what, I'm just going to stay quiet, see what happens. And they flew down just perfectly. They landed 30 yards away. They walked 10 more yards closer. I didn't have to do a single thing but raise up my shotgun and shoot them. A um, couple years later, I think it was 2021, same spot. I was in a, I was in an elevated blind that morning. Thunderstorms and raining. Um, the bird gobbled probably 10 times prior to the a shooting light on the roost and then it started to pour so it started pouring after he gobbled i decided not to make any calls he wouldn't have been able to hear me anyways a hen actually ended up coming out into the field i was watching her for a while and i just happened to glance back into the woods which would be to the south and i just see this long beard coming um, beard flopping and he got within five yards and bam pulled the trigger i could have i probably should have waited till he walked underneath the blind and went out in the field i could get some video of him strutting around and stuff but at that point in the season, I had already it had missed, been a, a, long, I had missed it had been a long year. And yeah. I had missed a gobbler earlier in the season with you filming, Isaac. Probably the same bird, potentially. So I didn't. I was just not in the mood to chance anything, and I took the shot. I don't remember but, that. Uh, we were in the middle ridge. You were filming. Came off the roost. 50 oh, yard yeah, shot, yeah, yeah. Pe- peppered the tree. Yep. Probably the same bird, to be honest. But, That's probably another TSS bird that could have been killed. Yeah. My shot pattern just spread out and, you know. Went like Looney Tunes, perfectly around the body and never any in the body. So another quick story. Remember, so this was pr- sometime in between, I would assume like 2014, 15 time. We called in a double way back in the back. Luke shot a bird. You shot a bird that didn't die because was, you. We were, we were poor and cheap kids, and yes. I was using like seven shot. In my yeah, he shotgun. wasn't using a turkey load. This turkey dropped and then got up and flew away. We just didn't have the means to have any other better ammo. Luke Luke was using the same shell as me, but for somehow his died for some smoked reason. his bird, and then um, 
Yeah, my, I, my, I remember mine rolled, got up, and ran off a cliff and flew. It probably died somewhere. We just never found it. More than likely. We've had – and you were filming – you know, we were filming back then, and unfortunately, we, if we would have had a little bit more patience. We shot – me and Luke both shot when the birds were behind trees. Yeah. So they just they, weren't. They, weren't they, were, they were in range of your camera. You just They're just behind trees. Mm-hmm. We used to kill a lot of birds up there. Me and Ernie doubled up there once. In that and, spot, and the the style of turkey you know, hunting we do is so hard to film, and yet we still keep trying to do it year and year. Yeah, we'll do it. The again. Ru- the run and gun type, kind of like THP a little bit. Yep, very the much like THP. And and no decoys. And, and yeah, running. we're not sitting in blinds all day because, frankly, it, I hate doing that. Yeah, and it doesn't make perfect um, Heartland bow hunter type footage. But that's okay because there's no decoys, there's no blind. You know, you gotta you gotta camouflage yourself, the cameraman, the camera. You can't just be out there with your Fancy lens, yeah. in the open, moving around, which kind of makes it kind of yeah, tough. This, this year is going to be interesting with the filming aspect. I'm assuming we're still going to use the camcorder for most of the stuff. I mean, I would love to. So we've talked about it with deer hunting. Maybe we'll be able to accomplish it now with turkey. I would love to double stack the cameras some, to try to get a, to try to get the 120 it. frame kill shot. Some to be able to use stuff. both cameras if possible. But. We talked about the uh, dedicated filmer, too. Well, my last note here, we have a couple other hunts, I guess, to talk about, but my last notes were how many turkeys have lived around here because of filming. A because lot. I'm not shooting a turkey anymore unless it's on film perfectly because there's less turkeys and there's no need for me to kill one just to eat it. So I'm only killing a turkey now if it's on film perfectly. I have a whole bunch of examples listed here. There was... Me and Ernie, which is an older guy. I said his name a few times now. I guess I should clarify. Ernie's an older guy. Used to be a fire department dude that we kind of learned some turkey hunting stuff from over the years. Hunts locally. Hunts we, a we farm hunt, next to ours. Yeah, we hunted he Used to lot. hunt with us a lot. He, me and him one time, were trying to get a bird on film perfectly. Had a gobbler perfectly in range. Um, north side. Weren't able to take the shot. Back and forth, basically. Ba- yeah, back and forth. Same thing happened with me, you, and Matt. It might have even been the same year. On the north Back side. There, yep, we caught a bird in. You're filming perfectly. Bird's 25 yards away, head up, big old gobbler. Me and Matt don't have the, a perfect shot, even though you can see it on camera. That bird ran away. Um, me and Tyler and Steve one time, we were hunting their farm. Uh, we were on the zoo, actually, and we had a bird come in 25 yards. I'm filming him. The bird's walking 25. It was a snow gobbler year, so it might have been around 2010. Uh, this bird's skirting us, and... Tyler's telling his dad to shoot. His dad's telling him to shoot. No one ended up shooting. Bird lived. Mm-hmm. Um, bird almost lived last last year. I had two, two years ago when Dylan shot the bird with us. Yeah, because you, I was filming. You didn't have a shot. I had the bird on camera. He dipped down in the valley. Dylan was able to shoot behind us. Dylan shot when yeah, it wasn't Dylan shot, film, of course. Um, Using TSS. Yeah. Last year, those two gobblers. You you briefly mentioned this. How these gobblers are moving like a mile, half a mile every day. I had those birds in range five times, but the film was never perfect. Because you were doing a lot of self-filming. Self-filming these birds. Five times they were within shooting range, and I never took a shot because I couldn't line up perfect shot and film. Mm-hmm. The, one Kayla- day was, the one day they did a complete circumferential of my blind, and I filmed them on all sides. 360 degrees, they walked around my blind, and I was able to get some really good footage, but I couldn't get a shot and footage at the same yeah, time. The, the self-film run, it, it, it's, it's, it's tough. tough. It's tough. Um the best hunt I have I have it listed here. The best hunt that never was, 2018. Me, you, Tyler, Spaniel, Zoo. Yes. You know, opening light, lots of goblin. We still use this footage for a lot of things. I still use the footage. It's in the it's in the it's in the trailer for this upcoming season. 2018. I think it was opening day. Uh, us four are hunting back of this field. Birds goblin like crazy. Fly down. They pop out in the field about 100 yards away. There was five. Full fan gobblers putting like on a show. Three or four hens. They walk across the entire field. Finally, get to within about thirty yards. Spaniel's the closest one. He never. We didn't have a way to like stop the birds, or he didn't wait for us to stop the birds, or he took a walking shot. I guess on something happened. One of the gobblers. No dead they, birds because they were following the hens. Yeah, no dead birds. Missed the shot. He shot twice. I, I rewatched the video the other day. He shot twice. Um, that was back in the day of our big. Cinema style camera yeah, that we no longer yeah. have, but that thing took some awesome footage. That was an awesome hunt. I mean, we called in five full fan gobblers, didn't kill a single one. They ended up killing him and him and Tyler later that season. Killed two birds. Mm-hmm. They doubled up from that field. From that field later in the year, so two of those five birds got killed by 
Matt. And actually, one of those birds was the one we talked about earlier without a beard. So there was a beardless. And the bird that Matt killed that year had like three strands of beard that were 10 inches long, and the rest were like four inches long. It was a weird year for beards over there. Technically, it counts as a 10-inch yeah. as long as they have one hair. As long as they have one. Is it a hair? Yeah. One, one, or is it a feather? Well, it's a feather. It's a feather? It's a one single feather that long. Counts. So beards, beards are feathers? Yep. Even though they look like hairs? The last hunt I have to talk about on here, and then we can add some more if you want. I know we've, this podcast is actually yeah, we're rolling. We're getting way good. longer than our last few, but we appreciate you guys if you're still listening. It's been fun to get back in the studio and talk. Turkey hunt. Turkey hunt. Uh, the last one I want to talk about is you cleaning up for Jay. So your first gobbler was cleaning up for me with a missed bow mm-hmm. kill. And then, I think 10 years later, so I think it was 2017. Yeah, you. I was filming because I had already, I might have already killed two birds that year. No, we weren't filming. Well... Were we? I f- no, you're right. I wasn't filming, but I had already killed two birds, and I was outside of the blind calling. You guys were in a blind. Why weren't we filming? I don't. There was a period of time where we didn't no, really have. No, to- I know why we weren't filming. This was a period where Jay didn't like being filmed. That's uh, why we weren't. That filming. That might be it. He, Uncle Jay's got his quirks, and during for whatever reason during this period of time, he did not like being filmed. I remember specifically that's why we weren't filming because there's no i think it was because he hunt. was just starting out at columbus fire again and was like yeah maybe something you know, like just that. didn't want to be regardless he didn't like being filmed at during that period but we still took him hunting and that's why we didn't get any footage of this hunt even though i can remember this hunt like i'm watching a video is that weird same so it was in the so i remember this hunt like i'm watching it on a youtube screen even though we weren't filming it was in the very same exact place that we the dad killed his first bird. Okay. So it was in the exact same clearing where dad killed his first bird. You and Jay were in a blind. I was behind the blind. I was calling. Jay had his bow. You had a shotgun, the boomstick. Mm-hmm. And um, the weird part is we took the blind with us and set it up. Yeah, we were running around the woods with a blind. And then a bird so that was the go- second we, set of the morning. We were running around. The bird gobbled. I don't. He came... He, he followed the same exact path the, the dad's first bird came on. But, yeah, we were, we were running and gunning. Whatever happened with the initial fly down happened. We waited a little bit, and then a bird started hammering, so we closed the distance, set up the blind in that clearing. I got behind, started calling. That bird came in on a rope. Yeah, 25, Jay, 30 yards, something. Jay shot. He was full strut. Jay shot. He did hit him. And we low, found out later he, low. he just skimmed him. Low. Like, took some feathers like, off. You know, de-gutted him a little bit, a little bit of blood. But he hit him, and the bird like did a pirouette, and then Isaac just blew his brains Blasted out with the, with the boomstick. That was back when the gobblers were thick as thieves. You could just mm-hmm. go out and get one to hammer and Yeah, because we killed down. three birds off the farm that year yeah. or something like that. Yep. I'm trying to think if there's any other stories of turkey hunting. I know lately we've gotten Nick a little bit involved the last three or four years. He's kind of started turkey hunting. He's been involved. With Has he Cass- shot a turkey? No, but Cass had killed a Jake or two with him. Mm-hmm. Um but we got Nick involved with hunting. Me and him had a really – we've had a couple good hunts at his one farm. The one, I had a bird coming in, cornfield strutting, dead to rights, got to within about 50 yards for whatever reason, didn't like something, turned around, ran off. I use that footage a lot. Um, there was a particular bird that we used to call Tommy Boy. He'd always roost it on the same ridge every morning. And would gobble his nuts off and then fly down, go silent. We'd never see him again. That so, happened all season long. On the screen, we're watching a bunch of videos from West Virginia. We're going to save those stories. Yeah, we'll talk I think about we'll do a podcast when we're down hunting in Southern Ohio in a couple weeks. So we'll save those stories for that. Yeah. The next, so next week, if you're still listening at this point, next week's podcast is going to be probably a recap of their miserable trout camp that they're leaving for tomorrow. Yep. Yep. Uh, and Which then we can add a little right bit now. of this, add a little bit of that into it. But the next podcast will be Trout Camp, and then the following weekend we're going to be in Southern Ohio as part of Turkey Camp Chronicles at the Gore Camp, the new Gore Camp, we're Gore Camp kill, 2.0. We're going to kill six birds. We're going to kill, yeah, well, maybe at least one. We're killing we'll a bird, be, and we'll then be six. And I am going to find, I'm going to find Gagger fucking sheds. Yes, massive sheds because there is some sheds down there to find, and no one's looked yet. And I'm just fucking excited to get down there shed hunting. So it's I'm gonna be a, so excited for that. Be I will be in Kentucky that fucking weekend. time. Yep. And Ethan will be in Kentucky hunting turkey. So you have to suffer through one more fishing podcast next week. And then it'll be a turkey hunting, shed hunting podcast. Then it's going to be deer season before we know it. Yeah. Summer flies by around here. Summer does fly by. Because we'll we're getting ready up. for deer season. Yep. We got minerals 
to get put out. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff. We to got start blinds doing. to take in, stands to take. I mean, down. there's going to be a month of heavy turkey hunting that we're still going to talk about. Yeah. Oh, if yeah. We kill some birds. We'll be on here talking about that. But we're going to start with the deer management stuff, and then uh, late summer is when I want to start getting all the guests on. We got to line up yep. a bunch of guests, and people will be getting ready for deer season, shooting our bows, getting them ready. Yeah. What? Uh, thanks everybody for listening. This is episode thirty-eight. Correct. 38 steer shot podcast and we are out out